Did you know that Paul Bunyan had a family? He actually had two kids. So this story is about his family. It's called The Bunyans. It's by Audrey Wood, and it was published by Blue Sky Press. One day when Paul Bunyan was clearing a road through the forest of Kentucky, a great pounding began to shake the earth. Looking around, Paul discovered an, an enormous hole in the side of a hill. The lumberjack pulled up an acre of dry cane and fashioned a torch to light his way. Paul climbed inside the hole and followed the sound underground for miles until he came to a large cavern glistening with crystals. By the flickering light of his torch, he saw a gigantic wo woman banging a behemoth pickaxe against a wall. It was alert, love at first sight. I'm Carrie McIntai, the gigantic woman said. I am sitting on the hill with my lucky wishbone. Fell down a crack into the earth. I've be been digging all day trying to find it. With a grin on his face as wide as the Missouri River, Paul reached into his shirt pocket. I've got one too, he said, pulling his lucky wishbone. Marry me, Carrie, and we'll share mine. Carrie agreed, and their wedding invitations were mailed out right away. The invitations were so large, only one needed to be sent to each date. Everyone could read them for miles. The invitation said, you are cordially invited to the mammoth wedding of Paul Bunyan and Carrie McIntyre. The couple were married in the enormous crystal chamber that, that Carrie had carved, and after the ceremony, folks began to call it Mammoth Cave. The giantess had dug one, had dug more than 200 miles, making the longest cave in the world, so the name fit perfectly. Paul and Carrie settled down on a farm in Maine, and soon there were two new Bunyans. While Paul, Pa Bunyan traveled with his logging crew, Ma Bunyan worked on the farm and carried for their jumbo boy named Little Dean and a gigantic girl, girl named Teeny. One morning when Pa Bunyan was home between jobs, Ma Bunyan cooked up a hearty breakfast of pancakes and syrup. Teeny was wrestling, wrestling with her big purple puma named Slink and accidentally dumped a silo, silo of syrup on her head. Teeny's hair was so sweet, bears crawled into it and burrowed deep in her curls. Try as they might, Pa and Ma Bunyan couldn't wash them out. We'll need, to, we'll need a forceful shower of water to get rid of those varmints, Pa or Ma Bunyan declared. Paul Bunyan had an idea. He placed his daughter on Babe and led them to the Niagara River in Canada. The gargantuan father scooped out a huge hole in the middle of the river bend. As the great river roared down into the deep hole, Teeny cried out in delight, Niagara Falls! Teeny showered in the waterfall and the pesky bears were washed downstream. When little Dean was five, he wanted to work too, so he followed his pa out to his logging camp in Montana, thinking his son was too young to do much of anything. Paul set little Dean down in a barren canyon in Utah to play the, for the day. When the lumberjack went to fetch him, he couldn't believe his eyes. Little Dean had carved the canyon into a wonderland of fanciful shapes. Pa Bunyan was got tongue-tied and said, that's a mighty Bryce Nannan, Coy. I mean, that's a mighty nice canyon, boy. Somehow part of the mix-up mix up stuck. To this day, the canyon is known as Bryce Canyon. After all of that sculpting, little Jean's shoes were full of sand. Pa knew Ma Bunyan wouldn't want her clean floors dirtied up. So he told Little Jean to sit down and empty out his shoes. The sand from Little Jean's shoes blew away to the eastern on the eastern wind and settled down in a state away. It covered a valley ten miles long, making sand dunes eight hundred feet high. 
everyone knows that's how the great sand dunes of Colorado came to be. One summer, little Dean and Teeny wanted to, go, wanted to go to the beach. Ma Bunny told them to follow a river to the ocean, but all the rivers flowed west back then, so they missed the Atlantic Ocean and ended up on the other side of the country instead. Ma Bunny tracked them to the Pacific Ocean, where she found Teeny riding on the backs of two blue whales and little Jean carving out 50 zigzag miles of the California coast. When Ma Bunyan saw what her son had done, she exclaimed, What's the, I the big idea, sir? From that time on, the scenic area was known as Big Sur. Ma Bunyan knew she had to put up a barrier to remind her children not to wander too off too far. So on the way home, everyone pitched in and built a the Rocky Mountains. Teeny gathered up and sorted out all the rivers, leading, letting some flow east and others west. After that, the children had no trouble following the eastern rivers down to the Atlantic Ocean, and when they wanted to go out exploring, Ma Bunyan would call out, Now don't cross the Continental Divide, children. The best thing about camping is sleeping outdoors, and the worst thing is not having enough hot water. That's why the Bunyans always camped in Wyoming. By the time their camping years were over, Ma Bunyan had poked more than 300 holes in the ground with her pickaxe and re released tons of hot water from geysers. But Ma got tired of poking so many holes, so she made a geyser that blew every hour on the hour. After that, there was a steady supply of hot water to keep the giant's clothes and dishes sparkly clean. Teeny named the geyser Old Faithful, and to this day, Old Faithful still blows its top every hour in Yellowstone National Park. As our great country grew up, so did the Bunyan children. When the kids left home, Ma and Pa Bunyan retired to the wilderness area where they still live happily. Teeny hitched a ride on a whale over to England and became a famous fashion designer. Her colorful skirts made from hot air balloons and her breezy blouses came from ship sails were a sensation at the first World's Fair in London. Little Dean traveled to Venice, Italy, where he studied astronomy and art. Every day, the gondoliers would take their passengers down the Grand Canal to watch the giant artist chiseling his marble sculptures. After graduation, little Jean decided to explore new lands. As his parents had done, so he took two great jumps and one flying leap and bounded up into outer space. In 1976, the year of our country's bicentennial, the spacecraft sent by the National Aeronautics and Space Administration was on a mission to study Mars. The spacecraft was named Viking 1 and it took some took many photographs on the surface of the planet. One mysterious photo looks like a face carved out of a colossal rock. Some say the photograph was, photograph was not a face, but an illusion caused by light and shadows on the rock. Others think the famous Martian face is just a splitting image of little Jean Bunyan. If that's so, who knows what he had done on, up on the other planets. Only time will tell. Thank you.